Wholesome, my good peoples. Welcome to the Be Transformed podcast, where we're talking about ideas that stimulate wholesome thinking into identity, purpose, vision, and action. I am James Anderson, and with me is Carolyn Anderson and Logan and Michelle Eaton. And this is Marriage Part 3. Let's get into it. All right, so once you get married... (laughs) Hi, now we're heading into hi, yeah. part three. Part 162. <laughs> when you get married, I was just thinking about when we got married. So, you know, uh, Carol and I, we knew each other for a little while, but we, we, we dated for about 10 days, got engaged after 10 days, got married three months later. And then, you know, now it's like 16 years and four kids and getting into all kinds of good things. But once you get married, eh, the two become one. And part of this reality is automatic, and the other part is not automatic. And when something is not automatic, it is not guaranteed. And it is not accomplished without intentional effort. So it's like there's there's a, a spiritual reality that when a husband and a wife commit and join together in this union, and then you consummate that bad boy, the two become one and there's there's a spiritual reality that just that that happens in during that consummation time well but then the process of the two becoming one in like heart mind and spirit that is a bit of a process and so when you first get married you know they you got this kind of honeymoon phase now people would talk about this when i was when we were newly married and I was like, whatever. I was like, honeymoon phase is going to be my whole life. Well, it turns out there was a phase, and it did end. <laughs> and, I, and, I think, uh, and, you know, it's like the honeymoon phase is like the free gas. It's like the easy ability to be together. You know, because when you get, before you get married, right, and you're just engaged, and, you know, you, you want to be married so bad and whatever, and, you know, but when you're when, before you're married, though, it's like, you know, everybody still goes home. Right. Like at the end of the day, even though you want to stay the night. You go home and well, what 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 you don't recognize because you, you want so bad to be married is that you're there's some alone time in there that alone time you, you'll find is, is kind of necessary. But when, when you get married, you're like, well, nobody ever goes home. It's like you were hanging out all day and now it's time to go to bed and you're still together. You wake up and you're still together. You eat breakfast, you're still together, right? Like there's like, there's all this togetherness. And in the beginning, it's wonderful. And it is, it's wonderful. It's just, it's wonderful period. But it's like the, there does come a point where the gas runs out. And while there's gas, there's just like, there, there's a lot of grace for each other, right? Where there are differences because you got two completely different people coming together you got two people you know and we talked about this i think in part one of culture you got two people coming from two different cultures you know and and i think we said it in the beginning of the podcast i think logan was talking about it but how you have like all of us before we got married we're living on our own so i mean you've got you've got your own way of doing things right you've got your own the the food that you eat right like when you go to the grocery store i mean logan ate a lot of hamburger helper <laughs> <laughs> Michelle, did, did you eat a lot of hamburger at Helper before you met Logan? Um, no, not really. <laughs> Growing up, yes, but not by myself. <laughs> when I met Logan, I ate a lot of hamburger Helper. <laughs> <laughs> he infiltrated your eating habits. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, you know, you got two people coming from, you know, two different places, you know, and... Um, and so in the beginning, there is a lot of that grace. And, but then that, that grace will t- tend to, to wear off. And it's like, then you have to start paying for your own gas. You have to start doing the work to like where the two then start becoming one, where you're the two different cultures start to become one culture. And that's not necessarily that that can be a bit of a process depending on, on, on what it is that we're talking about. So, you know, so we just kind of want to look at, um, like, you know, did you guys have, have the honeymoon phase Eaton's? Oh yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure. It's I can't, to say that. It was, I, can't, so long as, I can't pick the specific date that the, the gas ran out, but sometime, sometime back in the, uh, sometimes between week one and week two. <laughs> <laughs> 
but yeah, for sure. Yeah, we did. And I think it's normal sometimes too when you are going through those really challenging times to um, – I'm guilty of craving that honeymoon phase and where things were a little bit easier and we have to stop and remind ourselves, well, we are headed in a, in a direction with vision and purpose and we don't want to ever go backwards. We're always moving forwards. Mm. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I mean, whenever you're watching a movie, right? Them (laughs) rom-coms, everybody there is in the, is like the, the pre honeymoon phase. Yep. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. That's why I don't watch them. That's <laughs> it's so depressing. <laughs> well, it, it's kind of like it's it's a it's not devoid of reality, but it is. It's like you know, once you get beyond that, there is more meaning, and, and it is richer. Like there, it's like you actually can handle bigger problems. You actually mm. can like work through things, and and mm. through that is growth. And so to like. The, you know the beginning phase is its own phase and it's it, you know it's fun and it's a little more carefree um but then like it's a foundation that then we've built on so like you wouldn't want to go back to no. that foundation you want what you've built even if it was work even if it's harder now but like it's it has more meaning to it more depth yeah <laughs> it was fun. we were watching something i think last night and and we were talking about that that concept but it's like yeah, the, those people got the the honeymoon phases. Like, but what what are they going to look like in sixteen years? I don't care. I was like, yeah, they'll probably be divorced. <laughs> <laughs> the movie doesn't fast forward that much time, right? <laughs> and, and that there is a there is a real like danger in you know viewing those things and actually expecting life to look like that because yeah. you know it's like and even even being married, like you can watch something like that and you can like. Like you said, Michelle, you can like crave what you had or crave what you see maybe somebody else has, which is probably not reality anyways. If it's well, it's definitely not if it's a movie or if it's on social media or if it's something where you're you're like you're trying to picture like, oh, man, I wish we had that or I wish like that that was what it looked like. And, and it probably doesn't. <laughs> or if it you know, again, if it's a movie, it's not reality anyways. But there's a real danger in, in looking outside and, and thinking that like you're missing something Mm -hmm. right absolutely getting so hung up in fantasy that you forget about reality but some you you know but something you said that really stuck out was um your ability to handle bigger problems you know you talk about wanting to live on purpose and like the stuff that 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 we all you know at be transformed are getting into um and and the stuff we're doing you know individually the ability to handle bigger problems, like the ability to hold more weight, the, um, yeah, the ability to move faster is, uh, that's a, that's a powerful thought. And it's, it's different than if, if you're just marinating in the fantasy of, of the beginning. Um, yeah, I, I just, I love that. I like that perspective or that reality really. Yeah. So when we think about like the ability to handle bigger problems, what in the beginning are some of the smaller problems that that um, that are that you got to overcome to be able to kind of grow and develop? You know, what are a couple of these things, these challenges that we had after the honeymoon phase that and and how how did we overcome them? Right. Like what what have have we been through that can help? some other peoples uh who are thinking about getting into marriage and even people who are in the marriage (laughs) the thing that's come up a lot and especially as we've talked about this is just unspoken expectations and we've mentioned this in the other podcast but um but yeah just especially when like you said we all lived independently so then you know it's really like how do you spend your time so or how i think you should spend your time (laughs) so so that that you know and and our our silly example that i can business i can remember is you know i was gone for the day and i came home and i expected that there would be certain things that were cleaned or the dishwasher unloaded or whatever and you know just just because maybe that's what i would have done with my time but i didn't communicate or ask Whoa. or you know it was just that it was unspoken but it was an expectation that I had on James and so you know that and I would say 
I, I think we're a lot better with that now. Like that we've definitely figured out how to communicate in that area. But in the beginning, you, you don't, you don't communicate it. You just, you just assume or mm-hmm. hope or expect that like you should know that that's what I want you to do. Or <laughs> I don't care what you think I should do. Yeah. No, I mean, <clears throat> yeah. I mean, like a, another example of unspoken expectation would be like, you know, for us, like during the weekend, we both had ideas of what we wanted to do and how we wanted to spend our time. Carolyn would often be the first person to communicate. Uh, she, cause she, she we, we could use the word. She communicates more, um, nice have, heavily use more and words. extensive. Um, <laughs> but no, she would, she would communicate, uh, first what she wanted to do. And then even though I was thinking something, I didn't say it. Cause like you're talking about, we were all lived on our own. I didn't, I'm not, I, w- I would do whatever I wanted to do, but now you're talking about being together with somebody else and somebody, and you know, Carolyn would want to do something and I wouldn't necessarily want to do those things. I want to do something else, but I would agree to do it. I wouldn't communicate that I wanted to do something else. So then I would get bothered, but I wouldn't say anything and she wouldn't notice. And so we go about the weekend, do whatever she want to do. And we're just kind of living her life (laughs) (laughs) because, because I didn't like, I don't know. I just didn't communicate, didn't want to communicate, whatever. And so, so then Sunday would come around, something would happen. I'm mad because I didn't get to do anything I wanted to do. I only agreed to do her things. This is all, this is all my fault, but I would be mad. So then somehow we'd end up in an argument, like just something small would happen. And because I've already, I'm already cooking on my insides. I would then kind of lash out on her and then she would get offended. And then she would speak out of her offense. And then I would take what she just said and I throw it back in her face. And then she'd take what I said (laughs) and want to throw it back in my face. And, and this was like, this, this was the, the downfall of unspoken expectations of where somebody wants to do something or expects the other person to do something, but there's no communication, right? And so then you just end up being bothered. And when you're already bothered, something small becomes big or it becomes the outlet to, to release the pressure cooker. <laughs> Did you guys ever had that happen? <laughs> Yes. Just yes. this morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I was just kind of thinking like, uh, yeah, I mean, no, the unspoken expectations, yeah, not communicating and then something not going as it was thought to be and then obviously having a conflict about that because one person is fine because it's it's going the way that they thought it was going to be and the other person is upset because it's not going the way they thought it was going to be. So it's like thinking about... Um, the different, like how things are going to go and making sure you're matched up on those things before you get into something, before the weekend plans or before it's like, Hey, if we're going to go do this work, this is how long it's going to take. This is how long we're going to be out there. This is what it's going to look like. This is what I'll need. This is what you'll need. So it's like, yeah, if you don't do that, it's going to result in a cop because one person's not going to really know. It's not going to add up to one person's expectations. And then the other thing too is like, the two becoming one, it can't be based on like emotions. Um, Because like you'll have all these emotions right at the beginning. And like, that's that kind of like that free gas that you were talking about where it's like, you're running on those things. But then it's like, um, I don't know where I heard this, but like emotion is just like energy in motion. So it's like, it's going to change. And so you're going to have these different things going on. And then uh, eventually, yeah, those those emotions change and, and you can't base that to becoming one on on an emotional experience um, because, yeah, then the then the expectations won't be communicated clearly. And then that's when the emotions run out <laughs> <laughs> or get unleashed. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, you know, absolutely. So, you know, for for us. So, so there's, there's, there's two things in this one is like, and Logan was just kind of touching on this right now, but like, how do you overcome 
unspoken expectations. I guess you have to spoke up. (laughs) (laughs) How did, what, what did we do, Carolyn? Well, for sure on the weekends, it's like, well, and we still do this. It's like, what, what ideas did you have for the weekend or what, you know, what were you thinking? And so then that way, cause you, cause you do just naturally kind of make plans in your head, even if it's not like specific or it's not like it's an actual plan thing with somebody else or a specific place, but like, Oh, I was kind of thinking I wanted to like get out and go for a bike ride or oh, I wanted to let's go somewhere and go for a hike. Like if, if we have those ideas in our mind, but we don't say them and the other person's like, I, I just was like, I've been working a lot. I just, I want to relax. Like, you know, so then it's like, you're kind of going to different directions. So for us, it's, it's really been like, what ideas did you have for the weekend or what were you hoping to do? And then when we communicate that, You know, it's like you can do all the things that both people are wanting to do. Like there's plenty of time. It's like, okay, yeah, let's let's go do this. And then we'll have some downtime after that. Or like we need to get out for a bit, but then or we need to get this accomplished or finish this project. But then then there can be balance because it's communicated. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Right. Cause she, you know, she'd want to like, Oh, we'll want to hang out with these people or go, go do this. I'm like, all right, I want to go, I want to go on a, I want to go mountain biking and have, you know, a lot of times I was just by myself. Uh, In the like, earlier so, days. Yeah, now we got everybody now out there we all doing go, it. Yeah. <laughs> well, sometimes we'd go, but there was hills and she was like, why are there hills? Yeah, well, I was I was used to the Slippery Elm Trail in Bowling Green, Ohio. Which was a flat, which, old, like used to be a railroad. Yep. It's just paved. paved and smooth. You just so go for boring. Bike <laughs> so boring. <laughs> That's what I was used to. Then we lived in Missouri, and down the road was this like bumpy track. And the first time we went on it, I was like, this is terrible. <laughs> hate this <laughs> like and then you're like you had to go up and down hills and it was so much effort <laughs> i was like this is horrible <laughs> now we now we do that and now i have we, adapted but <laughs> now we live in the mountains so <laughs> we do live where there's Adapter a, lot more, a lot more hills ohio northwest ohio was flat as flat as flat can be yep yep anyways what about you guys <laughs> talking about how to get through the unspoken expectations yeah, how'd you spoke through them? Well, we currently make spoke, lists. <laughs> spoke the expectations. <laughs> we spoke the expectations. No, yeah. Make Re- a list. Yeah, making a list, talking at the beginning of the day about what we what what our individual plans are. But it, too, it's like kind of, one of the things that came into my head was what you taught me a long time ago was like stopping, recognizing the problem, and then employing the kingdom mindset where it's like when things are starting to fall apart because of the unspoken expectations, it's, mm. again, it's like, instead of getting angry and being like, well, I thought this and I thought that it's like, okay, stop. And then communicate. Okay. This is what, when we're here, this is what it's going to look like. When we're doing this, this is what it's going to look like. And, uh, for me too, it's like, uh, having to, I don't know, ask like, or, you know, Michelle having to explain to me like, Hey, I want to do this or I need, I want to spend time with family or whatever. And me having to understand that and then, um, adapt as well. So it's, yeah, it goes both ways. Yeah. Doing stuff outside of our desires or our comfort zone or how for the other person too. Sometimes like you were saying, sometimes doing things, we don't necessarily want to do, but then compromising and doing what the other person wants to do as well. But you (laughs) realize really quick, like if you can speak before what it's going to look like, it goes so much easier because then you're just prepared of like, um, instead of like, yeah, going into it ill prepared is like, you have no idea what the outcome could be. And then when the outcome isn't what you want, it's just going to be bad. But going into it with a known outcome, like ideal outcome or like just a generalized outcome of this is a result, then it's um, a lot easier to get through whatever that, whatever you have to do, spending time with, with uh, in-laws or whatever. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Well, you know, you know, have you guys found that like, sometimes it's like, you know, maybe the expectation is you guys go do so, like the idea is that like, if somebody wants to do something, you both have to do it. But do you find that sometimes if one person wants to do something, sometimes it's just they should go do that thing by <laughs> <Yeah>. themselves. <laughs> Logan's phrase is divide and conquer. 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like we were like at the beginning, it was like we had to do everything together. Like if we were going to do right. a project, it was like, okay, you go with me. We'll, we'll go to the store together, get all the stuff together, do that, and blah, blah, blah. But it's like, yeah, it, we've gotten to the point now where it's like, well, it may just be better if you go do that and then I can do this or whatever. Yes, yeah. that has been a recent, um, definitely I, helpful recognition um, that it's okay for him to be doing something and I can go do something else or vice versa. Yeah. Yeah, well, then it's not like, you know, so obviously sometimes you do stuff together, even if the other person's like, that wasn't my first choice. But like, then there's there's less of the like forced, last one. like you, what? Or my last one. It wasn't my first choice. <laughs> my last one. <laughs> <laughs> there's less of that forced, um, you have to do that. And I, and I think that, you know, there were there were times where you would do that and then it, it even if it was spoken like even if it was clear it just you you still kind of backfired disgruntled disgruntled about it <laughs> because like i didn't really want to do that and so figuring yeah. out those things that you know it isn't it actually isn't that big of a deal if you don't go do that with me like and at the end we'll both be happier <laughs> like oh. yeah well that actually got us into some trouble uh in in some arenas of life of Carolyn wanted to do something. I'm like, no, I don't want to do this. She's like, oh, I want you to come in. I'm like, okay. But like, there's some times where that really backfired and like, you know, expectations had to change and things had to change because it, 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 you know, it wasn't always working. And so it's like, and it's hard too. Cause you know, we're two are becoming one, you know, where like, kind of like, what was the norm for, you know, Carolyn was not the norm for me. And that norm wasn't even working for me. And, um, like I couldn't, there was things that I saw that she couldn't see. And I'm like, look, we can't like, I can't, I don't know. But it was like, it, there was a process of like her having to let go because it's like, Hey, I was like, at the end of the day, like you and I are together and it, it's about you and me. Like, <laughs> And there's some, we need to make some boundaries in certain areas and, um, <clears throat> without getting into any details, but like, you know, there was just there, but there was some times where it's like just being agreeable and going like, wasn't actually the right move. There was like, yeah. Hey, we kind of got to change a little bit, but, um, but yeah, you know, recognizing some of that stuff. Um, I mean, that, you know, there's, there's, there's so many things there are there's some things that just come to mind and in, in, in like the unspoken expectations or just even spoken expectations right like you know before i met carolyn i went to one wedding <laughs> and then i met carolyn and what the i don't like everybody was getting married that she knew and here where i'm going to weddings and it's like these there's like no you got to wear these certain clothes to weddings i'm like i don't want to wear that She's like, no, you got to wear fancy socks. You got to wear a tie. She, uh, I think, I think she would lay stuff out on the bed. And I was like, what? I don't, I don't think so. I didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. I don't remember that. You don't remember that? I, no. So let's just I, say I, I didn't I do that. I feel like there was at least one time and I'm just like, what? Like, I'm like. <laughs> You know, and, it, and it's like, um, you know, or like uh, doing the dishes, right? She, you know, she's like, listen, like when you do the dish, you need to put these dishes here. And there. I'm like, if you want to do it how you want to do it, do it yourself. <laughs> because, you know, again, you got two different people who look, we all lived on our own. And I, I would, I would, when I lived in Missouri by myself, I had a, I only had a bike and I would bike to the grocery store, get everything in my backpack. And then, and then, you know, at some point I'd grab all my laundry. I have to go to the laundromat, throw that in my backpack, ride myself to the laundromat. You know, we washed our own clothes. We, we, we did our own groceries. We ran our own finances. And then you, again, you got, you got two different people coming together with two different ways of doing things. And, um, yeah, it's just, you know, part of the process of, of the two becoming one is, is like not even just the unspoken expectations. Sometimes it's even worse when you have the spoken <laughs> expectations <laughs> of what somebody else thinks you should do or how you should do it or whatever. And it's like, you know, 
it's 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 just funny when like the, it's the clash of cultures like this is how it's supposed to be done where the other person is like shut up <laughs> if you want me to do it get out of my face oh my gosh well and that and that's where you know 16 years down down the road <laughs> You know, we have learned the things that don't matter. It's just like, Who it, really, cares? it really doesn't matter. How you <laughs> yeah, I think part of the commitment is being able to adapt to, like you're not committed to one way. Part of commitment is being able to adapt to different ways, what works best for the, the team. Yeah. Yeah, and, and letting go of letting some of your go. expectations. And you know, it's Whoa, like okay, like this lowering your expectations. No, no, no. Let I'm, not, I'm talking about the dishwasher. You know, that's uh, yeah. stupid. It's like in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't matter. That's and yes, I do like to maximize it so that everything fits in there. And I have learned that it's like it's okay if I want to move stuff around after after it's already in there to get it get it started. But I don't have to like critique other people for how they loaded it if i want to change it i'll change it but not because i'm mad at people but just because i'm like oh i'm gonna turn it on and i want all this to fit you know it's like but it's just like letting go of the things like i cannot micromanage james like no i can't be mad and 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 some people's marriages are maybe more like that where it's like they can be conformed to whatever it is that the other person wants but like sure one one person becomes the follower because the other person's like over dominant yeah and it it is it's not healthy to to try to control the other person and so like finding the things that you're you're holding on dearly to but they're really not worth it like as james would say like that's not a hill you want to die on like it's it's just not there's just certain things that they just don't like i might have had that expectation but it's like is it a big deal no it's not and learning what those things are and learning and learning what the other person needs. Like, cause like you're talking about like when I had an idea of what I wanted to do and sometimes you wouldn't say no, you would just like delay the answer, which would eventually turn into a fine. Okay. Yes. Mm. But like your answer, because you didn't give the answer. And I know that now when you don't want it, when you don't give an answer, it's because you want to say no, you're just not. And so like learning what the other person is really saying or thinking mm. when, you know, like, cause you're, you're trying not to say no. <laughs> Sure. But but I now know that that lack of an answer is like, no, I really don't want to do that. <laughs> you just don't say it. Mm-hmm. Figuring those things out is helpful. Yeah. Yeah. So if if we look at, you know, a lot of what we're talking about is communication, right? Like unspoken, spoken, um, whether you're high and tight on this is how it's supposed to be done or not. Um you know, all these things can bring about a little bit of conflict. And so conflict resolution is pretty important, right? Because, you know, like even when we're talking about simplicity or the value of simple is to prioritize what is most important. Conflict resolution has a lot to do with, with that perspective of prioritizing what's most important. Because when you get offended you will speak out of your offense. Like when you get angry, you'll speak out of your anger. And those things are not productive and never produce a wonderful result. So it's like conflict resolution is, is, is really like the success of that is being able to resolve things quickly versus like escalating things for days. Um, because that's, is that's no fun. So, you know, when you guys think about, you know, conflict resolution, obviously, you know, some of this stuff was like, you know, a way to, to resolve conflict with unspoken expectations is to take extreme ownership. Right. Which is like, all right, how can we solve this problem? Like we keep both wanting to do different things, um, whatever, how could we better communicate that? And so for us, you know, on Thursday night, we would be like, Hey, what, what were you thinking you wanted to do this weekend? And then we both say what we wanted to do. And then we'd work out a schedule so that we could both do what we wanted to do. Right. That was, that's, that, that is actually a proactive conflict resolution, right? Like where you, you're in this cycle where there's this continual problem. Well, Hey, what if we implemented, we actually communicated what we wanted to do? Well, then that, that reduced the conflict. But like, even like if you're in the middle of a conflict or argument or whatever, 
you know, what do we do to resolve that problem? I think the point about looking at the bigger picture, not just what you're currently focused on, mm-hmm. like maintaining the right perspective. Cause like, I think your like your perspective is, is like a, uh, representation of what your paradigm is. And so if your paradigm is all screwed up, your perspective gets all screwed up and then you're just like, you're so focused on worldly things where it's like, you can't see that what you're concerned about is, um, what, what do I want to say? You can't see that what you're concerned about is like, it's not uh, a big deal. It's not a big concern. It's like in the, like when we're, when you can step back and think about, okay, where are we going and what are we trying to build and, and create and what are the people that we're trying to become? It's like this thing is like just a small thing. And if you can't, if your paradigm's all screwed up and you can't get your perspective right, then it's just like, it's hard to break through that and figure out how to create a proper perspective, I guess. But mm-hmm. that's what I do. I mean, that's just what I try to do is like, just take a step back and be like, okay, this is not what, like, there was no, this is not part of the purpose contract that, <laughs> that <clears throat> it's like when I, you know, when, when, um, when God gives you something to do or puts you here for a purpose, it's like the getting caught up in like the civilian affairs is right. not part of the contract. And yeah. so when you have to, so I try to take a step back and just be like well what is my perspective why am i thinking about this and will this last through the refining fire and if it doesn't then it's like this is not what we need to be focusing on what about you michelle how, how do you how do you try to resolve conflict just punch him in the face <laughs> i create it so you, you create the conflict <laughs> See, now you're um, really owning the extreme ownership there. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I learned a lesson. I mean, I'm owning up. It's me. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, no. Like, I mean, during those times, it's a little bit, I would say I'm working on learning to communicate better. Um, Mm. I tend to shut down when I'm upset. Um, So when I'm like, upset by something or holding on to little things like I tend to want to escape communication temporarily so I'm really working on working through it like Logan said getting past it as fast as we can to focus on what truly matters and recognizing that those little things aren't even shouldn't even be a major concern even like it should be a quick quick switch like oh yeah that was wrong this is how we're resolving it and now we're gonna move on (laughs) like just getting through it faster so i would say that's something i'm working on for sure is getting better at um conflict resolution um Mm. and not holding on to little things and getting past it kind of yeah yeah i think I think we're always working on better communication. <laughs> like yeah. It's not that thing that doesn't end, you know, and it's just like, I, it's like, and it's good if you're always working on things. Like, I don't, I, th- I think there will be things that you, that's that com- you stop dealing with, <laughs> but that's then, the committed to growth. Yeah. 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 Continue. Yeah. Continuing to grow. Yeah. Um, just recognizing you don't want to live in that negativity and feel that because then that will play a role in the rest of the day and how, how we're, how we're living. <laughs> so just yeah. kind of, yeah. Trying to recognize what's really bothering me, get to the root cause and move on from it. Yeah. And I like, I like what you said. I mean, you guys are both talking about just like how quickly can we just get over this and just resolve it, which I think sometimes, Like there is a reality where sometimes you do have to walk away when it's getting too heated. Like you just like, you're not going to solve it in that very moment. But I think there, then there's the reality that you can walk away for too long. (laughs) And, and I would say, you know, like there are times where uh, and I get, I do get some good cleaning done <laughs> when I'm <laughs> frustrated. <laughs> so look at all the stuff that's clean, man. She must be mad. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good time but, to clean. Put all yeah, your energy into that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, and sometimes it's like, the, y- there is such a thing as like pushing too hard when neither of you 
are like when you're still in the moment like you can't get there like you're just going to keep pushing and someone someone's just going to get more mad you know so like there is a reality of walking away but like but I I can think of times where like maybe we walked away for too long like you know we should have like it and when we did finally come back from it it was like we were no longer connected to what the offense was and so it's like it was easy to get over it and so it's figuring out how to get there faster and not dragging it out yeah that's a good point yeah taking a break sometimes we um logan will even say i don't think i'm helping you in this moment i don't think i'm able to help you right now maybe you just need to take some time to yourself and we'll come back to it later or and i feel like that does help i walk away or i go take a shower or i do the dishes or something and think about it then i'm able to more easily recognize where i might have owned up and went wrong and how we can kind of fix that and move on. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think, you know, when I can remember in in Missouri and that was when we lived in Missouri, that was like our first seven months of marriage. And, you know, it would, it would have been like connected to this unspoken expectations of where I wanted to do something, but I didn't communicate it. She communicated first. I just agreed, but was bothered and um, was holding on to that. And then, you know, on Sunday or something, uh, a little argument would, would, would come out. And because I was already bothered, like a small thing would, would, would just kind of become the, the gateway to release some of that um, pent up frustration. And so then, you know, so I would say something that offended her. I would say something offensive and that would then offend her. And then she would speak out of her offense. I would speak out of my offense and she would speak out of her offense. And then it took about that long. And then it was kind of like, I don't know if you guys ever seen that movie. Um, it was one of the Avenger movies, but it's like uh, this lady like punched the, 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 the soul or spirit out of like uh, the Hulk. And so there's or like there was like the, the guy was standing there, but then it was spirit where soul was like floating in the air. It was kind of like that, like where like I would it, I would literally it was almost like I was lifted up out of the situation and I could look at it objectively. Right. So like, like emotionally disconnected and I, and then I would be like, Oh, I was like, I was already mad. I said something offensive. She got offended and now she's speaking out of her fence. And now I'm, I'm just responding to her, her, uh, you know, offended comment. And that's all we're doing. Like, this isn't solving the problem. This isn't getting us anywhere. And so I would literally, I would stop and I would say, look, this is what just happened. I said this, which offended you. And then you start offending. She'd be like, yes. I'm like, all right, my bad. <laughs> right? Like, it would, like it, we, would, we, we would cut to the chase real fast because I could detach from the situation. So it's like recognizing that, you know, because if you don't detach and you're just speaking out of your offense, there's no end. Because one person throws a, a, a stone where well, you throw one right back and then it just keeps going because, you know, you want to get back the person who got you. <laughs> but if you can detach emotionally, recognize what the actual problem was, then you can stop all the nonsense and then fix it and move on. And that's that's what we would do. I think, too. Like purpose creates a sense of urgency to where you can't like it just forces you to not spend time or spend just a little bit of time there, too. So it's like without purpose or like a plan or a vision, it's it's really easy to just to get caught up and just live in that for days and weeks and and then just let that compound with other things that happen. So it's like having a plan or a destination helps too, like as like a medium of getting through those things. Because it just uh, you're you don't have the mental space to stay in two places at once where you're working towards something and building something. And then you're also trying to worry about, you know, some stupid thing. So it's like you can't be in two places at once. So you're trying to constantly get back on, which helps resolve the, some of those conflicts, too. Yeah, you don't have time time for it. It's just like is this isn't really where we want our focus and attention to be. So you have that puts it into perspective as well. Yeah, well and then you're also just looking at the results. It's like what what we're talking about right now and how we're communicating isn't doing anything. It's not even solving the actual problem. We're like we're on the surface. Not even addressing the real thing. If we just address the real thing detached emotionally, then we could just like you guys are talking about, we can move on. Let's do that. 
<laughs> Who cares? Logan's Don't start sw- using that. Yeah. Well, you know, it's like, who cares is like, you know, it just doesn't even matter. It doesn't even matter. Like you don't need to rehash what happened. You don't need to run around in circles for an hour. Be like, well, you said that. And that made me feel like that. Who cares? Like, I think it's, it's gotta be one of those code words where you both can say it. Otherwise it just comes out. <laughs> she stuck a handle. Well, I can easily it, say that. I, I don't think Logan would care though. Logan would yeah. probably be like, eh, yeah, who cares? You're right. Well, if it can come, it, you know, if it comes to that place where it's more of like the joke, like, hey, we're running in circles, let's jump out versus the like, I don't care what you Who think. Who cares? <laughs> yeah. But, do you know, don't sweat the small stuff. Like, don't be so easily offended. That's that's, a, that's an important one, you know, because sometimes, you know, we can all kind of, you know, especially in the beginning, too. I mean, you're a little hot and bothered. You can throw a little jab, you know, jab, 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 jab. You know, don't be so easily offended. You know, there's that, there's that, you know, when you t- think about like communication, there was this message we listened to one time and they were talking about, it's like sometimes you can get so distracted by the words somebody's using that you can, you can miss what they're actually saying. It's like, hear what the person's saying over what they're saying. Like, where's that person coming? Like, oh, they just came in and are like, I didn't even do anything and like they're kind of unleashing, you know, the fury. Well, there's a good chance that that fury has nothing to do with you. It was just there was something else and you just happened to be the outlet. But it's like it, it that can be a more challenging thing to like let go of, but it's like if if you if you can learn to detach enough where like you're not so easily offended, then you can recognize the situation more accurately. And this is what is vitally necessary in marriage and in life is to, to be able to see reality more clearly. And so your ability to detach your ability to have awareness over the situation, over what's happening, not just hearing what somebody's saying and then getting offended, but like, why are they saying that? Or, you know, like what's all the circumstances around it? Like you want enough awareness to where you can have a greater understanding because that's going to bring you, more peace, less offense and quicker resolution. And so, you know, I think, I think if, if if you were looking at developing your ability to to, do detach, it's it's the ability to increase your awareness in a situation. So let's just say, you know, you, you get into some conflict, you're having some problems, um, but you don't know why it happened. Like, then once you're actually got some resolution, like debrief the whole situation, like figure out, learn to detect the source of the problem versus the symptoms, right? The symptoms, like when we had unspoken expectations, the symptoms were like, hey, I'm, I'm offended, you're offended, so now we're just talking about our offense. But like why, what happened in the first place? Well, the first place I was already bothered because I never communicated that I wanted to do something. I was just agreeable to what you wanted to do. And then the reason why we were got into it is because I said something offensive. And then now we just got a fence throwing back and forth. Learn to, 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 to find the source of the problem. And, and one way you can do that is by like debriefing the situation after the fact and be like, all right, well, what happened here? Well, I was like, well, you know, when you said this, you know, that, you know, that just kind of hurt my feelings or whatever. I just, that kind of made me mad, whatever, you know, like learning, you know, because it goes back to like what you say actually matters. Like there's no benefit. I don't know. When you get offended, you just want to offend back. Like you you want to because you're like being attacked and you want to protect yourself. And, and I don't know, prove your point or whatever. Make the other person feel how they made you feel. But it's like there's no benefit to that. And so like what you say matters. And, you know, so the, the less attacking, the better. <laughs> more attacking only begets more attacking. So you're going to have conflict. That junk's just going to happen. So it's like some ground rules are like, hey, let's not tear each other down. Like, because, again, I mean, you know, in the beginning, you, you can both be so tight-minded that you don't want to adjust 
And that right there, that'll create some decent conflict because it, when you have two immovable forces trying to make the other thing move, like that's where you got conflict. And so, so sometimes that, that can be hard until you get a little more flexible and pliable. But, um, but yeah, I think, you know, when you think about conflict, I think one is like the goal is not to tear each other down. Like, you know, we'll have conflict, but it's like, we're just, we're more trying to like, what's the source of the problem? Not just like, Hey, I, I'm mad. So let me just, let me just throw a hundred stones at your face right now <laughs> <laughs> with my words. But yeah, you know, just being like, all right, recognizing that everybody gets upset. I think, I think recognize when somebody does something that offends you, And then you being able to see when you did that in the past, it's like that understanding brings like the ability to have compassion or like understanding. But if you just take the, if somebody speaks something offensive and you just get offended, then all you want to do is offend right back. But like another thing I think about when like in conflict, so one, you're not trying to tear each other down, but like two, right? Cause I mean, you can get heated. It's, it's possible to get heated and it's possible to provoke each other to like, uh, you know, about a volcano about to erupt. And, um, and one thing you want to do those develop awareness enough to that before that volcano erupts, that's where you would then take that break. Like, Hey, this, like what I'm doing, what we're saying is not helping either one of us. Like, let's take a moment and uh, reconvene later. But uh, another thing that, that, that we said straight out the gate though, was like, we're never, ever, 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 never, ever, never, ever, never, never, ever going to use the D word, right? Like divorce is not a word we are ever going to use. I don't care how mad somebody gets. You can cuss all you want. You never, ever use the D word. Anytime, if you get frustrated and you're like, hey, well, I just want to take a break or oh, I can't believe we got married or oh, this was a mistake or something like that. All those words, right? Your word, what you say matters, man. And that junk will erode your commitment. Because as, as soon as you use that, be like, Yo, well, maybe we should just maybe we should just get a divorce. You just planted a seed. Oh, maybe we should just take a break. Oh, maybe we should have never got married. Oh, blah, 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 what, whatever. Like anything that, that attacks your commitment, you're planting a seed. Then every time you get pissed, you're going to water that seed and that seed will grow into a plant that will eventually erode your commitment and it'll break it. And that's what happens to people. You can never, ever, ever. One time I made a joke and I was like, and that was one joke too many. It was like, it's just, it's never, you're never allowed for that to be a part of your conversation. Because it, it, it's 100% against commitment. And it's not a way to handle conflict. Yeah, well, that makes me think, you know, along that same line is just, you know, something I've obser- observed in other people that I I never participated in is just like when you're with, you know, your girlfriends or whatever. Girlfriend. <laughs> I don't know why I said it like that. But I try not to be with my girlfriend. <laughs> um, <laughs> girlfriend. But, you know, it's just like, it's just a, it can, there can be this negative thread of like, I'm just going to complain about what my husband does or what I think is annoying. And like, it might come off as joking, but it's that same thing where you're just, you're watering that seed of just like annoyance. Mm. Um, Annoyance, is that the right word? Sure. (laughs) Um, But, you know, just like, you're just, you're, you're watering they're, it's just negative. And I think like, I've, I've never participated in that with friends where it's like, you know, they might be, I, I, I've just been in situations where they're complaining and, it, and it's usually, it's not anything crazy, but it's just like, well, they weren't aware of this or like, I can't believe they can't figure that out or whatever. And it's just like, it's not the, the underlying, um, thread that you want like it's just it's mm. not something that you want to be feeding. And so I think that goes along with, with not talking about divorce, like and also like in divorce being like that there's an out, which we already said, like when you're committed, like there is no out. you're, you're saying there is no out. So like not, not throwing out those things you don't mean. And also not like feeding other conversations or things that are just like tearing. It, it is the tearing you down, even though I'm not, you wouldn't be doing it to your face. Like you'd be doing it behind your back. And, and I think it comes off as just really lighthearted, but I just, 
I see other people do it and it's just never something I participated in because that's not, those aren't the things I want to focus on. I don't want to be like, let me, let me think of all the ways you annoy me. Like that's, that's not, that's not where Sounds we're. Sounds like a good song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all the ways that you annoy me. <laughs> the 10 things I hate about you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just, that's you know, a movie. that like you're, the, the conversations that you have, the words that you're saying that like, it isn't about tearing the other person down. Like you have to, you have to focus on, like you can't just throw out negative comments. You can't just say things Mm -hmm. that like maybe in the moment you feel, or maybe it feels like a good zinger. Like you, you just really have to watch like where you're putting your attention. I think that's even right there. If, if you feel like you need to throw out a zinger, you're, (laughs) you're offended. (laughs) Right. So that's self-awareness. And that can be one of those indicators. That's like, that's how you build awareness, right? As you start becoming aware of how you're thinking and how you're feeling and what you're saying and doing. And it's like, if you want to throw a zinger, it's because you got some offense in there. So get rid of your offense. Yeah. And I think one, one other thing too, is like we said from early on is, Hey, we're not sharing our junk with other people. Like, because I'm not interested in somebody else's input, somebody else's weak input in our marriage. And so we didn't, and that, and that's not to say that you can't, have real conver- honest conversations with trusted people. But it's like, but just like, like you're not just out there with your girlfriends, you know, talking about you know every little bit of problem. Cause you, you the, nobody has any use for low quality ideas and low quality suggestions. And that junk will influence you. And so it's just like, we just, we didn't do it, but that's that. But like what you're talking about, it's all part of tearing each other down. And it's like, that is not what is going to build a good marriage. It is the junk that will erode it. And so it's like staying away from the disintegrating elements is, is vital. And so just becoming aware of that stuff is very necessary. I'm thinking like, uh, too, just like what we said from the beginning was, do you really know who you are and, and like who you, are you comfortable with yourself? Like if you're really comfortable with yourself and you truly, truly know who you are, it's harder to get offended. Cause it just kind of like, it's like, yeah, I know you're angry and yep. That, that zinger makes sense that you would throw that out there. But it's like <laughs> internally you're like processing this stuff and it's like, it doesn't really affect you because you're just like, yeah. you're so comfortable with yourself and you're, confident in yourself and you know who you really are so it's like before getting married it's like that's a good thing to spend time on is who who really am i and who does god say i am and 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 who do i think i am so that when those things come up it's like yeah there's going to be times where we attack each other or whatever but it's it's much harder to be offended and carry on that conflict if you're just really comfortable with yourself and you can understand like um, you know, okay. Yeah. I see where, I see where you're coming at with that, but it's like, you don't take it personally then at that point. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I feel like, you know, I could say something out of insecurity that's then like, well, you're probably doing this because of whatever, you know? And, and, it, and it's like, you don't like me. Yeah. People and it's, like, it's, like it's coming from insecurity. Like, it's like, I'm perceiving what you did or didn't do because I'm Through not the lens of insecurity. Yeah. And so like, like exactly like you said, like, being enough, like knowing your value, it, it, not look. It, and we talked about this in the other podcast, like not looking to the other person to like make, make you, you who you are, like make you complete, you know, or make you enough, you know. So it's just that, well, like, I'm not enough without. You. Yeah. So like, if you have that, if you have that own inner security, <clears throat> and you know who God says you are, and you know your value, then, then hopefully you're not saying those comments right. out of insecurity, or not thinking those thoughts that don't come from the right place. No, but for sure. But I mean, it, but like, yes, because if you are insecure, low self-concept identity crisis, then yeah, you're going to be offended and your perspective on situations is going to be skewed because it's coming from the place of identity crisis. And so you're not, you're not looking at the situation correctly. You're not, you, you don't have a high enough perspective because your own self-concept uh, needs some some work, and so yeah, hundred percent. But it but even that you know. Again, when you're in conflict, and like Logan said, it's like all right, I hear what you're saying, and I but I understand why you're saying it. Like I know where that's coming from. Like that understanding 
to where then you're not getting offended. It's like, Hey, that's, that's just, that's you being insecure. That's like an, ins- that's like an insecure statement. And, um, but that ability to see the source of the problem versus the symptom, right? Cause the symptoms, that's the stuff that's just coming out. <laughs> those are those zingers. <laughs> it's a spicy meatball. <laughs> It also helps to have coaches and a dad that when you were growing up, you know, like when you would do something wrong or something would, would call you a name or, or throw out an attack. Not like, not to hurt you or anything, but it was like hearing those things. It's like, okay, yeah, I know that's just, it's just you trying to motivate me. <laughs> <laughs> so you get used to being called names. <laughs> Don't be such a wussy when you're on Don't the football field. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> to clarify, yeah. I don't call Logan names. <laughs> <laughs> but if you did, but apparently you he, did. Would, he would um, <laughs> he know how care. to take it. <laughs> Don't be a weenie. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, so I think a lot of things in this in the beginning years of marriage and just even you know, it never stops. But communication is just one of those things that you got to be able to navigate. Like you got to be able to communicate. You got to be able to understand where the other person's coming from, and that that's that does take some time. It does because it does it can take a little bit of time because again you're 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 trying to change and and i think half the time you don't even know what's happening but you're 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 trying to mold two different minds and two different ways into one way and there's depending on how flexible each other are is depending on how it you know that's that's to the degree of difficulty or ease that you will then kind of two will become one in that area and so yeah go ahead yeah well that's the I think that's the learning to think about the other person because I think in the beginning you you kind of want them to think like you. Sure. And so it's like because well, it's the right way. Yeah. It's your <laughs> right. Like it's yeah, that's yeah. your culture. My you've perspective. Always done it. Right. Yeah. yeah. So it's like but it, it's it, it's that thinking about the other person and their perspective and recognizing that it might be different. And then also reading between the lines, like I said, where it's like I learned what his lack of an answer actually meant versus trying to push my way or my idea, like actually seeing the other person in their perspective and, and, you know, learning like that there, there is a difference and it doesn't mean that my way's right or whatever, but like actually considering Mm. the other person. And that's part of that effective communication that we talk about. You know, it's just like, that's part of, you know, there are two people in the conversation and while you're becoming one, you are still very unique. You are, you, you will handle things differently and you won't always see eye to eye. Like, and sure. that's, that's it's okay. I'm taller. <laughs> you, yeah, that's <laughs> accurate. More ways than one, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Well, right. Well, I think that, you know, when you talk about, um, See, not seeing eye to eye that's what that like you can end up with your two immovable forces that is trying to make the other force move and in that situation you will both only lose it's like being able to walk away and be like that's okay that we should but right now we're seeing this differently or right now i hear what you're saying but you're just mad and so it doesn't really matter like you don't mean what you're saying it's not going to affect anything so let's just let it go and move on or whatever. But yeah, I just communication is a, is a huge part of it. You know, otherwise you end up with the silent treatment, no conversation. <laughs> you stay on the other side of the house. <laughs> Pretend like the other person doesn't exist for a while. <laughs> but no communication that, that, that would be, that would be your biggest tool is that if you can learn to communicate, if you can learn to recognize offense fast, and then you can, you know, you can recognize that there's two people. And so if you can come to the common ground and then you can move forward. But if you're always at odds, this is not good. So conflict resolution, man, is important. And it's it's something you got to get good at. Not that it's just like everything's conflict and everything's trials, but it's like, these are the things that 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 
this is why people win and this is why people lose is communication. And so being able to correctly handle communication and, you know, just live together is vitally necessary. Yeah, well, it comes it comes back to that commitment, that bigger picture. It's like, can you have a conversation that's then for that forward growth? Like, can you, you know, and we will talk about this. Like, James is always good about pointing this out. It's like, okay, that's the problem, but what's our solution? Like, how do you actually move forward? And so, like, it, with everything through the lens or the mindset of, like, our commitment and our connection is the end goal. So then, like, how do we get to the other side of it? How do we see the solution instead of just sit here and talk about the conflict? Right. Right. But you always or blah, 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 whatever you, know, you always we get it either. Yeah, you, know, you could have a whole another talk about communication, but <laughs> but yeah, no, 100 percent, 100 per. Well, you always is holding on to things from. The well, past. you always <laughs> is general. Give me a specific situation where I did something. <laughs> Right? It's like, well, you always do this. When? I don't feel like what? I say this. No, Are you, I know, okay, no. You're giving it's, it a general example right now? Cause uh, yeah, no, no, it's just calling me. I know. No, but I'm just saying that's <laughs> well, a general not. statement. No, because, I mean, even if, me, if you're right, because you're because it's something that's you holding on to something. So if I say, well, you always handle it like this, that's like you're keeping a record, which means you got a bit of a, a problem, right? That's an internal problem for you. If you, you always do this. Well, it's like, okay, uh, if we if we take more a little more extreme ownership and a little more like simple where we're prior to prioritizing what's most important, it's like, hey, last Tuesday, when you said this like this, this is this is what I would like. This is kind of how I took it, right? Like specifics. You can't just go in there all general, throwing gasoline everywhere, <laughs> and then playing with matches because <laughs> that junk will blow up. But yeah, no. So, I mean, you know, to conclude, I know we're talking a lot about problems and, and, you know, uh, commitment and and all that stuff. Marriage though. I mean, if we go back, right. If we were to end on this, the comparable helper, a companion equal and necessary in partnership, right? Like marriage is for purpose is it's, it's not, it's not unemotional, but it's like, it's 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 more powerful than just like a need to have to not be alone it's more powerful than that it's more necessary than that and it's more wonderful than that but like in in your first couple years of marriage communication and what and for the rest of your marriage communication good communication effective communication what's the difference between effective and ineffective (laughs) it either works or it doesn't It either produces forward movement or it doesn't. Effective communication stops problems and and brings back reconciliation and connection and forward movement. Ineffective communication, because you can communicate ineffectively, where everybody's just spitting, you know, flaming darts at each other. And and you could talk in circles for days and days and days and never get anywhere. That's ineffective communication. So effective communication solves your problems and moves you forward. If what you're saying isn't moving you forward, shut your mouth. Like, <laughs> just stop saying things because your perspective's off. Right. Like and like Michelle was talking about, you know, you you go away for a little bit. You can actually process the situation and see where it's like, okay, here's where I was going wrong or here's where we were wrong. Come back and then get into effective communication. That's the goal. That's the mission. That's the aim. Effectiveness. All right. Beautiful. Well, my good peoples, thanks for kicking it with us until next time. Peace.